Okay. So, so who knows which class it is? Oh, it was, it was on the first uh, see, that's just it. We don't know for sure. I was telling you that first All right. So, in when the request was one of each type, does that mean one of these, one of these, and one of those? Is that what I'm understanding? Well, we'll start with the top ones. Can you start with the limiting reaction? Okay. So there again, we can make up our own problem, or do you want to read one off of what you've been working on? You tell me. Okay, so you got to understand that when we do that, sometimes it doesn't work out the way that we would like. Okay, so let's see here. That was last semester. Yes. But you still use molar mass. If you need to know um, copper 2 chloride, well, then you just use the periodic table, add those together, and that is your molar mass. Okay. we don't need to have all of this going. We can tune in just a moment because that's, that's what a hog means. You're part of the Harley ownership group, hence the name hog. Nope, I've got a Kawasaki. So, In this case, if there are 120 grams of octane combusting with 314 grams of oxygen, what is the limiting reactant? And percent yield of carbon dioxide if 700 grams of CO2 is released. Okay. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. The first thing we need to do is come up with something on the left and something on the right. What would that be? 700 grams. No, we need an equation first. Okay. So, see, with this, we're kind of throwing some of these concepts in together here. Octane. What is octane? How many carbons? Okay, so then keep in mind if you write out the structural formula, there's one above and below in hydrogens and one on each end. So that means take this times two, H18. So one above, one below times eight gives you 16, and then one on each end, two more gives you 18. Okay, combining with oxygen. Okay, O2, because gases are diatomic. We already know what's being produced over here, okay? Carbon dioxide, and what else? And what else? Yes, H2O. Okay, so the last time we reviewed this, this is where you have to ask yourself one of two things, okay? Are we battleship people? Or are we just straight dimensional analysis to give us what our product is? Okay, what, now what that means, now, and, and maybe that's the way you want to do, do this, because we need to see how much of this is going to be produced anyway. You can change these to moles and then play your battleship like we said. Moles of octane to see how, much, how many moles of oxygen is required. Then you do the same thing, moles of oxygen, convert that to moles of this to see how many moles of octane are required. It's a little more a little more work, but some people are more comfortable with one process as opposed to the other. Which do you prefer? You still want to convert these to moles first and go back and forth in that manner? Okay, so then what we need to do, I don't know if that will show up. 
we need to balance that too, but we could do that later. We can do that now. Save yourself some hassles. Do some recognizing here with this octane. What do we mean by recognize something specific about that octane? Diatomic. Nope, not diatomic. It's an alkane, that's true, but something about this guy here. So what about the carbon? It's not so much that there's eight, but if it's even, you need to double it. But yes, you would have got the same, same idea. So you need to double this right away. So then that gives you 16 here. How do we get 16 over here? Okay, now you can work on your oxygens next, but I would suggest you don't do it that way. I would recommend work on your hydrogens now, okay, because our carbons are now balanced. How many hydrogens do we have? Okay, so since this is a 2 here and there's 18, math would tell you to put an 18 here and take that times 2 to give you 36. 36 okay we're not quite done yet but do we understand this so far okay so then with our math 16 times 2 and then 18 times 1 add those together okay so then if we have 50 oxygens over there and only two here, you need to put 25 there, okay? This is where we're saying when we make these problems up, we really don't know if we're going to come out the way that we would like or hope to, but the process is still the same. Go where the numbers lead you. Okay, so change 120 grams of octane to moles of octane. Okay, so that's correct. For every mole of octane, let's see here, 12.01 times 8 is about 96. And then 18.08, add those two together. Yes, ma'am. So 12.01 times 8, 96.08, I guess. Okay. Add 18.08, 114.16. Okay. And again, that's just the atomic mass of that put together. Are we doing anything with this equation, with these coefficients? Of course not. We're not quite that far yet. So then the moment that we do this, 120 divided by 114.16. Oops. And that gives us 1.05. And would we, we can write something specific there, but we don't have to yet. That's the trap. Okay. That's how much we have. Yep. So if you choose to write it, that's fine. It's in the next step that you would want to do that. Now that we have this in moles, now we can fire this, playing our battleship, at oxygen to see how much of that is required. Okay. So in order to do that, for every mole of octane, you get a mole of oxygen then, okay? <clears throat> now we have a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Why is that significant? We've got to go back to our equation, okay? So we've got 2, we've got 25. There's a 25 in front of here, and then there is a 2 there. So then, 
1.05 times 25 and divide that by 2, 13.13. .13. Moles of oxygen. Now we can write that as REQ. Okay. And maybe we'll get some clear cut answers right away. And maybe we will, maybe we won't. Because we need to see how much of this we have now. 314 grams of oxygen. Okay. For every mole of oxygen, how many grams do we have? Because, again, crystal ball or spidey sense is working. You laugh if you want. We'll see this. We're going to see moles of oxygen. Chances are when you do that, something bad will and or can happen. We're going to put 16 down here. Why is that wrong? It's gotta be doubled. Because it's diatomic and it has to be doubled. Okay? And I'm wondering, a bit older sis remembers that. She said she was helping her roommate with this stuff. That's why it's nice to know what's going on when you are off on your own in college. Okay? Because some people don't have that opportunity to learn this. And maybe they just choose not to. I don't know. Take your pick. 32 grams of oxygen. Okay, so then 314 divided by 32 gives us 9.81. Okay, now we may be able to determine our limiting reactant at this time. But it is also possible that we could be short on how many moles of octane are required. The bigger discrepancy would tell you which one's going to run out first. Okay. In other words, for, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not laughing at everybody in here. I really, it, and it's, the reason I'm laughing is who can we pick on here? A ladies relay team or a gentlemen's relay team? Okay. So are we saying four by one, four by two, medley relay, relay, four by four, four by eight, which one? Well, what's the most popular? Four by four? No? Okay, four by two. We, we want to go a little further here. Okay. So then. We could, you could be mean and say, well, between, because I'm guessing both of you run the four by two. Then who are we missing here? Who's the other part of your team? Okay, so we have Jackson, we have Jack, we've got Jace, and we've got Chris. It's not that any one of you are slow, but one of you can limit on how successful you might be. And it's not always going to be the same. So that's why, that's why I was laughing earlier, saying who can we pick on in those regards. So you determine who your limiting reactant is. Who's, uh, oh, has that happened? Okay. Well, sometimes it does. All right. So, again, we need to determine what's going to limit this. Just like an individual in a relay race, it's not that they're they're doing the, they're worse, they, they must, might have a bad day, and that limits what your success could be. All right. So then we need to see how much of our octane is required. And to do that, for every mole of O2, you get a mole of octane. We got to go back to our balanced chemical reaction. A2 goes here. And then 25 goes down there. Okay. So then 9.81 times 2. Divide that by 25. It gives us 0 0.78. Okay. 
and then that is REQ. And remember, this is what we had. This is what we have. Okay. So we had a dollar and five cents of octane. Okay. How much does it cost for this reaction to go through? 78 cents. Do we have enough octane? Okay. I wouldn't say plenty, but we do have enough. Okay. Then when we look at this, okay, we have $9.81 of oxygen. And how much does it cost? $13. So that means you are limited on what you can produce with this oxygen there. So therefore, this is your limiting reactant right here. So why would we want to make sure that we um, label this as our limiting reactant? Why is that important? Yes, because we can't use this to figure out our percent yield. Well, you could, but it's going to throw your results off because you are limited on what you can do because of this analogy that we have. Okay. Now, another tricky aspect about this would be if this is our limiting reactant, what number are we going to start with? Do we start with this one, or do we start with this one? Right. You want to start with what you have, not what's required. So therefore, you can do one of two things. You can start all the way back at the beginning, or you can say, well, we already have 9.81 moles of oxygen. Okay. So if that is the case, do we, we don't necessarily need to start all over again. We can just say, we know what our limiting reactant is, so we're going to take this out and maybe get rid of these because we don't need them anymore. Because that's why labeling what your limiting reactant is so important. We know what that is. Okay. So we're already at 9.81. That number's the same. This one will change because now we can get to that side of the equation. And what is it that we are looking for? Grams of? Right. That's one of the things we probably could have done earlier. X amount of grams. Now, remember, we already measured, okay, uh, da, 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 700 grams. Okay, so 700 grams of carbon dioxide is released. On pencil and paper, with what we're doing here, we need to calculate this yield because this was our actual yield. So our theoretically, the theoretical yield on pencil and paper, we need to put there. Okay, so what number can we put here? Remember, we're on that side of the equation now. Uh, not quite. Okay, moles of what we're looking for, CO2. Do we need any coefficients there? You get a 16 there. I'm kind of running out of space, so I'm just going to put it there. And it's not an equal sign here. We're on the home stretch. So for every mole of CO2, and when you do these over and over again, you tend to memorize them. I believe it's 44.02, maybe 0 0.01 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay. And that's measured in grams. And again, don't do this. Don't put 16 there. We've already accounted for that right here. Okay. So now... All we have to do is take 9.81 times 16 times 44.02. That gives us, we have one more step yet to do, 
like you said, divide by 25 from that number. Okay, that is two, it was 276. Okay, so theoretically, we should have 276. Okay, does anyone think they might know what the problem is with this? That, that's a problem. We didn't do anything wrong. It just may be what, it's going to be over 100%. That's just not possible. Otherwise, if it was, we'd be, we'd be uh, kind of like the Jetsons, flying in uh, uh, hoverboard vehicles and, and things like that. So, because those would be quite efficient, I think. So, perhaps the, the, the best way that we could have done this is we want to make it more realistic maybe change this 200 or this 7 to a 2, therefore we can put 200 grams here, what we actually measured. That will give you a more reliable answer. But won't take anything away. That is how we want to go about doing this. Hmm. Okay, so... Yes, a long time to do that problem, but it worked, okay? If you, to, to me, if you understand all of this process, I understand, yeah, the gas stoichiometry is maybe a little more difficult, but if you can follow all this along, or you can follow along, you are well on your way to being all right in college, okay? Now, there's going to be some bits and pieces you may have to, uh, put together that we just don't have time to do here. Uh, we, we just don't. Okay? Because hopefully older sis was all right this year. Yeah. Older sis, well, was all right this year. And then your older sis came out all right. Older brother, maybe. He doesn't share that information. Okay. Well, well, this is, I've heard that too. So, um, although you get to a certain point, you can't say that anymore. You can say that at, at a, for a four-year degree. Once you go past that, you that that doesn't work anymore. I, I think that's something you have to look left and ask ask your lab partner. <laughs> yeah, because once you're in graduate school, I think the, the idea of C's get degrees. I, I think that goes out the out the window. Okay. Anything else? We still have Monday, some of you. So you may have to tune into the Science Channel. But you've, you've got to realize this. And I think you do. When, when, you, when you work hard, good things happen. That's, it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But in the future, good things are going to happen. Keep that in mind. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay, we'll catch up to you next time.